Good morning. Good morning, Sister Pauline Opliger. Right, yes. Also known formerly as Sister Paul Raymond. Right, that's right. And we'll find out how you got that name in a little bit. Thank you for your willingness to come here and tell your story. Now I realize you have been on this earth for a few years and we can't get all those years in these 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus on you know, the beginnings and uh, some part of your ministry. But I think you've got some very interesting stories to tell us specifically how you got to the Adrian Dominicans. That's an interesting journey. So let's begin with that. You were born in Rice, Kansas. Right, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where is Rice, Kansas? Roundabout. Well, it's more or less in uh, mid-Kansas somewhat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big town, little town? Very, very small. I don't even, I might not even be on the map anymore. I'm not sure. <laughs> when did they take it off? I don't know, but it was a very small town. Mm -hmm. How did your folks get to Rice, Kansas? I have no idea. Where are your parents from? Uh, I, I don't remember where they were born. It's in my record, but I have to look okay. at my record to find it out. I don't uh -huh. remember where they were born. Do you have brothers and sisters? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. One sister is still living. She has dementia, so I can't talk to her much. Uh -huh. But my two brothers are deceased. And what are your brothers' names? Leland and Mark. Okay. And what was it like growing up in your family? Happy well, times, fun times? The happy times were at my grandfather's farm. Uh, he had a farm in Kansas, and um, he had animals at his farm, and we used to go to his farm. My aunt was there, and she would take us on walks along the creek, and we used to play with the cats, and it was really a lot of fun to go to my grandfather's farm. Mm -hmm. And is that where you uh, got your love of animals? I've loved animals all my life, right. even snakes. Oh my goodness. One time I found a snake in my drawer. Did I tell you about no, that? No, no. Shall I tell you about that? Well, just as long as you don't have it with you. <laughs> when I was, I think I was in Albuquerque, I opened up my drawer and there was a snake there. And I'm sure whoever put it there thought they'd see a show. They thought they'd see me throw off my arms and scream, but I didn't. I just looked at it. I closed the door and opened it again, and I said, does anyone know how this snake got here? There was dead silence. And I said, well, if we just leave it here, it's going to get out and crawl around the room. Oh, they didn't like that at all. So then somebody came and took it out. So was this a school or just as a bunch of little no, kids? This was, this, was, this was a fourth or fifth or sixth grade. Oh, it was a school. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. That was a very good response oh. to that snake. And another time, uh, this was in school too, uh, some girls said they had a snake in their science room. So I said, oh. So they brought it in. It was a, a python about this long. It was not a full-grown python. It was only about this long, about this big around. And they gave it to me and I held it. It was very gentle and nice. And then I said to the boys, would anyone like to take turns holding the snake? No. So then I gave it back to the girls and they took it back to the science room. I like all animals, even snakes, if they aren't poisonous. So they, you just could not let them get ahead of you, could you? Ahead of me? I don't know. <laughs> you took care of the situation. Now what about high school? Where did you go to high school? Uh, I went to uh, Covert, Kansas. And I graduated with four students in my class. Four students, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then what happened after you left, you graduated from high school? Well, I wanted to go to college, but I had no money. So uh, I, I think I borrowed some money or did something. I took enough courses in, I think I took the courses at Fort Hayes, Kansas State College enough to get a certificate, so... Certificate in what? To teach. Okay. So I, I took a few courses and I got a certificate to teach and then I taught in a little country school. There were only a very, very few students in this school. A little country school was called uh, out in Kansas. And, and I taught for a few years until I earned enough 
money to go to college. Mm, good for you. My parents couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. So you took care of the situation. You want to know what the challenge was? It was my challenge, no money. So I had to earn some money teaching to go to college, and I got a degree before I entered. I see. Okay. And then how did you meet Adrian Dominicans? Well, uh, first, uh, I think I went to New York first because I, when I was a kid, I learned that if you wanted to be an artist, you had to spend some time in New York. So I joined a little group in our Methodist church, a little group of college kids, and I went to New York and stayed there for a year. I went to lots of different churches because I, you know, I wanted to find out what other churches there were besides the Methodist church. Cause that's so you I were me you are you were Methodist. Yes. Okay. So then, after I was in New York for a while, uh, I um, got a got a job teaching in the. I got a job as a typist in the uh, Methodist headquarters, and I earned enough money to go to night school, but there was no credit with the art students league at night. But there was no credit, so I thought I have to get some credit. So. Someone told me, well, there's a plan at Rockford College where you can uh, work for a few days a week and then go to class other days. So that was very good for me because I had no money. So well, that was my challenge all my love, life. I never no had money. enough money for what I wanted to do. But you found a way to get <laughs> to accomplish what you wanted to. Go on. So um, then I went to... Um, Rockford College, and I worked in a um, a uh, place, you know, where mothers leave their children while they go to work. Oh, okay, a daycare. They, yeah. Yes, I worked in a daycare and earned some money, and then I went to class. What did you do at the daycare? Oh, I just, just watched those little kids. That's all. There was nothing especially to do. Just they were preschool, so they just you just had to take care of them. That's all. So you didn't give them paper and told them to dry, uh, draw <laughs> something. Little I artists. I have no remembrance what okay. I did with them at all. <laughs> but you were making money. That's mm -hmm. good. So then, uh, I finally uh, got a degree in art from Rockford College, and then. Uh, I taught for a few years, and uh, and then I went to Love's Park. I was in Father Raymond Gordon's parish at St. Bridget's in Love's Park. That's where I taught, and and then. How did uh, you get from New York to Love's Park? Is this in Illinois? Um, we well, see. I was I went to Rockford College because the Love's Park is uh, isn't very far from there. So, uh, and I got to, and I, well, anyway, I was in, ended up in Love's Park and in St. Bridget's Parish, and uh, Father Raymond Gordon was there. And so, um, and then uh, I read about, um, oh, I went to St. James Cathedral, and I found a pamphlet that said something about one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I thought, well, none of those churches I, was in New York ever said anything about being one holy and Catholic and apostolic. I have to read about this. So I read about it and I talked to people about the church and I went to uh, Mass at um, St. James, mostly on Sunday, I think. And then uh, I realized that uh, the Catholic Church was the true church after I read that pamphlet and, and went to the Masses. And so, um, so I started to take instructions, and I took instructions and uh, was baptized and became a Catholic. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Were your folks still alive? Your parents alive? Oh yes, they, oh yes. And they, how, didn't, they didn't like it at all. Okay, I but imagine. I, I, what? I can imagine they didn't like it because you were you were grown up as a Methodist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I had been away from home for quite some time, but um, then. Um, in Love's Park, um, I uh, I read about the Saint Catherine of Siena and Saint Teresa the Little Flower, how they were a spouse of, spouse of Christ, and I thought, oh, well, isn't that wonderful? That's what I'd like to be. So I uh, talked to Father, and I said, that's what I would like to be. And he said, we go and see the sisters across the street. So uh, 
our sisters taught at St. Bridget's. Right. So he took me over there and introduced me, so I sat down and talked to them. And uh, Do you remember with whom you spoke? I, I don't okay. remember their names at all. It was years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked to them and, uh, and then decided, uh, uh, as far as Father was, was concerned, he, if I wanted to join a congregation, you know, they were the ones who uh, taught in his school, so he recommended it. So that's how I got with our sisters. Okay. So then uh, we didn't have any come and see or anything. I, I just said, <laughs> <Not> I, <then. laughs> I said, just said, this is, I want to join this congregation. So they just took me there and that was it. That was the only time I ever went there, just, just to enter. Times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, so then that was in 56. So that's when I entered. June 26th. Mm -hmm. And your folks, not only did you uh, become Catholic, but you were becoming a, a sister. Oh, they, they were shocked. They had, they had no idea what to do or what uh -huh. to think. They had all kinds of strange ideas about Catholic sisters. Mm -hmm. And so they never came here to, to see you or when you not, made profession? or Not, and, not my parents, but uh, my, I think it was my brother who came once. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it was my brother. One of, Someone one of came. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Well, my niece came too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your parents were not exactly happy. Oh, they certainly were not. How did you handle that? Just I had to just had to ignore their feelings because I knew I what I wanted to do, so I, I did it. Okay, a little opposite from what some <laughs> some young women would have done back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You wanted to go to college. You wanted to teach. You wanted to become an artist. And see, you went after that. See, my father was a Methodist minister. Right. He, he did not have enough money to s provide college tuition at all. Whenever, when I got out of high school, if I needed money, I had to earn it myself. I, there was no way. I think I borrowed some money from an aunt one time to take some courses, but that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Study. You, you already began with the whole issue of study, which is one of our charisms, right? As a Dominican? Well, yes, well, I knew study. I had to study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that was part of you. You were mm -hmm. a Dominican probably from the time you were born. Oh, well, I definitely knew I wanted a college degree. I knew that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did, your other, did your brothers and sister have a college degree? Uh, all except my younger sister. My younger sister did not. Okay. Uh, she had two years of college, but she didn't get a degree. Okay, so you have a father who's a... A Methodist minister mm -hmm. and okay he was not the happiest when you became Catholic absolutely and, not no and then you decided to go on and then you entered the convent mm -hmm. so it's 1956 mm -hmm. and you become a, a sister an mm -hmm. Adrian Dominican mm -hmm. sister mm -hmm. then you went out on mission right or right, can you we can't go through all of the places that you have been but uh, what did you teach <coughs> the when, first times I went out on mission I taught maybe the fifth or sixth grades okay and then, uh, and then I uh, gradually, uh, oh, when it came time, you know, we were asked, where would you like to teach? I said, I would like to teach art. So then that was when I was, I went to teach art in, uh, at St., um, on the south side of Chicago, St. Aquinas. Aquinas, Aquinas, yes. Aquinas, mm -hmm. yeah. I taught art there for a few years. And then I taught art at Regina Dominican. That was wonderful. I really liked, loved teaching art. You were there for a while. Yes, mm -hmm. quite a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did your students keep in touch with you? Uh, one student, I, I had some strange emails from a student I had in the sixth grade way back when, in the 60s. But I, I, I think I kept up with one of my other students for maybe a year or two. But this kid, uh, from the sixth grade, uh, just sends me strange emails. So um, they're so strange. I just don't. I just quit answering them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's the mm -hmm. end of that mm -hmm. student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were in, in Alaska for a bit. Just a few months. Uh, we had to leave uh, because. Uh, we were told that we had been there long enough, so we were there for just a, just a few months uh, during the winter, but it was 
uh, it, in Alaska, winter is not like you think. Uh, there was no ice or anything like that because we were in uh, the southern, mm -hmm. we, were, we mm -hmm. were south of the Arctic Circle, so there mm -hmm. was nothing at all that you think of as being, mm -hmm. we were in Ketchikan. Mm -hmm. And so there was no ice around much at all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were there for just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, of other places that you've been, can you think of a special uh, moment in your life or uh, teaching or just that was very significant, perhaps that changed you? Well, I don't know if it changed me, but one significant uh, incident was one of my students, I think it was at Aquinas, won a national prize for one of the paintings that she had entered in a contest, and that was one of the most significant incidents in my teaching career. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. The other students won prizes, you know, uh, Scholastic Art Awards, that's, that's the contest mm -hmm. that I always entered them in, and they won... Uh, a, a quite a number of regional prizes which mm -hmm. pleased me and they were exhibited in Chicago they were exhibited in the large stores you know there was an exhibit of uh, winners in the region in these large department stores in Chicago so when when they won prizes their uh, paintings would be exhibited and that's where we went on our little trips you know mm -hmm. uh, we went to look at those pictures Mm -hmm. Your determination, you certainly had uh, a strong sense of what you wanted and what you needed to do to get or to develop the gifts that you have, your God-given gifts that you've been given. Well, when I was a little kid, our mother got coloring books for us, and I loved the coloring books. Did you stay inside the lines? I have no idea. <laughs> so... Uh, then, after I outgrew the coloring books, I just kept on doing other kinds of Wonderful. artwork, and I just kept it up for the rest of my life. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And your, did your parents see some of your artwork? Were they alive long enough to...? Uh, I'm not sure how much of it they really saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your brothers and sister? Oh, I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they artists? Well, I have an uncle who does painting, but... Uh, my brothers and sisters do not do artwork, but I have an mm -hmm. uncle who did some painting. Mm -hmm. What are some other blessings that you've had in your life? Um, blessings? Well, you know what? I'm an animal lover. And I think some of the blessings were some of the animals that we had. I just loved them. Mm -hmm. One in particular? Uh, well, yes. See, at Aquinas, I, uh, when the men retired, uh, when the school closed, they retired, and then I took mm -hmm. care of the guard dogs. And I loved those guard dogs. Cindy and Prince were the guard dogs. Mm -hmm. And so I took care of them. And we had no break-ins. I mean, the, the school was empty. There were no students there, but they were there. And so uh, I took care of them, and I just loved them. Um, you've lived a long life, and, and you're I continuing to live fully your life. Ninety-one. Ninety-one. Mm -hmm. A lot has happened in mm -hmm. your lifetime, mm -hmm. in the church, in the world. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain time in your life that, um, an experience that had a profound effect on you, something that was going on in society, the wars, you've been well, alive for a few I, wars? I think when I was a postulant, um, see, Sister Margaret Phillip was our uh, novice mistress, and uh, all the others, all the other uh, postulants were, had just graduated from high school, but I was older because I had even, I had graduated and I had uh, taught for a few years. So she didn't yell at me, like she yelled at the rest of you. So uh, I, I became very, very fond of her, and she was very influential in my remaining a Dominican. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And don't think we didn't notice how special you were. <laughs> really? That she didn't yell at me? <laughs> <laughs> you and visitation. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. So anything else going on in the world that uh, you can think of that, uh, or did you just push it aside? Uh, I think that um, in my later years, I, I consider every 
moment, every hour, very precious. Good. And so I continued to paint, even at, when I was in my 40s, I thought, well, when I'm in my 70s, I'll probably have to quit painting. Here I am, 91, and still painting. I can't believe it. It's beautiful what you do, and you've got that nice room over there in Regina. And my hands don't shake, and mm -hmm. so I can still paint. Yeah. So I'm that's, 91, I can still paint. That's a sign. Is there a certain motto or a certain scripture saying that's significant to you? I has not seen nor ear heard that one. What God has prepared for those who love him. I love that one. Why did, what makes that so special for you? Well, because uh, it just means that in the next life we're going to find something so wonderful that we had never even dreamed of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully if we get to the next life. <laughs> I think you're on your way. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to, to say to us about your lifetime? You know, you, you're the elder that the eldest one that I have interviewed so far. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. So what else would you like us to know about you? Well, uh, I would like for you to know that I am wondering if I'm going to get to be 100. I really don't want to get to be 100, but that's what I think about every now and Because, see, I have no health problems except my <laughs> poor balance, and my eyesight is, isn't so good, but I have no other health problems. I could get to be 100, but I don't especially want to. Why? Because I want to go to the next life to see what's there. I has not seen nor ear heard. I want to see what that is. I don't think you're going to get there too soon. <laughs> you think I'm going to make it I don't. I, oh, I think you will, sure. To 100? Sure, sure. Oh. But you're healthy. Well, I am And you've learned healthy. how to slow down. I am healthy. Mm -hmm. And you don't care around one of those phones. I just think they're a pest. <laughs> I had one one time for a very Did short you? time, and uh -huh. I just really like it. Uh-huh. What gives you energy and purpose at this time besides your artwork? Uh, I think I think the artwork is is it. That's 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 all I really care about much for doing, except for my people I talk to, friends like you. Who who has had the greatest, or has there an event that's had the greatest impact on who you are today? Event, a I world mean, event, or something. I can't think of any. You can't. Events. Okay. It's probably that group of women that you lived with back in June of 1956 that had the greatest influence on you. You mean the posthumous? Your crowd, yeah. Oh, my crowd. Oh, yeah. yes. I love, I love my crowd. Yes, mm -hmm. I know you do. Mm -hmm. And we love you, too. Mm -hmm. We love you, too. Anything else that you'd like to uh, tell us, like the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Oh... Oh, the best piece of advice was in a dream. Mm -hmm. I had a dream that I saw Jesus walking toward me. He was staring at me. And, um, and he walked up to me and he said, um, don't worry about anything. And then he showed me a desert that was flat with hills in the distance. And that's what he said, don't worry about anything. So that's what I think every now and then. So don't worry about living beyond 100. He just said, don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that your advice to us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of us that are watching, mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Pauline, that you want to tell us? How would you like to be remembered? Well, uh, I would just like to be remembered with the paintings that I have done. I have almost 40 some paintings. And so uh, if, if you want to continue to display them from time to time, that's the way I would like to be remembered. Because that's you in mm -hmm. those paintings. Mm -hmm. so those are sayings that are significant right. to you. Mm -hmm. They're all scripture po I quotes. I know they are. Yeah. And you have a new one over in chapel almost what? How often do you change them? Well, according to the feast day mm -hmm. or the season mm -hmm. or the scripture reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Anything else that you've always wanted to tell the congregation and those that are watching? Well, I really can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. One more last question. Uh -huh. Are the paintings mm -hmm. a spiritual experience for you? Oh, definitely. Oh, they are. They, they are. they are necessary for my mental health. If I don't That's paint, right. mm -hmm. I, I get depressed. When I was teaching, and I quit teaching. I got 
when I quit teaching art, I got severely depressed, so bad that I really had to take medication. And then I started painting. And um, if I paint, I do not get depressed. So I have to paint. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You meet your God in those paintings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God, yes. Uh, scripture quotes, yes, God is in scripture quotes. Yes, yes. Well, you are a very special person. To so the are you. Thank you. To the Adrian Dominicans. Well, so are you. Well, thank you. But this is your time. Now, we're going to, I'm going to show you this when we get it, but just know we are grateful to you and all that you have been and done for us and how blessed we are that you came to the Adrian Dominicans. Your journey to become a Catholic, your journey to become a sister, your journey to stay with us for as long as you have and to continue to give us of the gifts that you've been given. How pleased our God must be with you. And it's not time he doesn't want you yet. So just hang on there. <laughs> I am so pleased. I mean, you, all the Adrian Dominicans yeah. are so precious to me. I'm so pleased that God called me here. Yeah, yeah. It's strange. It's a gift. Yeah, you are. You were sent to us. You are special. So thank you, Pauline.